Hi, this is Jim Brusson here to talk to you today about velocity, capacity, and utilization. Let's get started by defining a few terms. Capacity relates to how much time developers have available to do work. If three programmers will have 10 work days in a two-week sprint, and we assume that each works six hours per day, then we have a total of 180 hours of capacity for this sprint. Velocity is the rate at which the team delivers stories. For example, a team that delivers 35 story points per sprint on average may be said to have a velocity of 35 story points. The velocity helps a team understand how much work to bring into a sprint, to forecast when they can deliver a set number of story points, and they can also forecast how many story points they can deliver by a specific date. The velocity is based on story points, and typically the meaning of story, po story points varies from team to team, and so usually velocity should not be used to compare the performance of teams. Okay, there are three different types of work performed in a sprint. Story work, which can include user stories, architecture stories, technical debt, and so on. There's fixed overhead, which is work that happens on a consistent basis across sprints. This may include things like backlog grooming, sprint planning, retrospectives, and so on. There's also variable overhead, and this kind of overhead affects one sprint, but may not affect others. Things like MVP planning, deployments, all-hand meetings, vacations, holidays, that's all variable overhead. Now this chart shows how the three types of work can affect your capacity. The green line shows the maximum capacity for the team. The areas of the bar in orange represent the fixed overhead that affects every sprint to about the same extent. Now notice that the area in orange, since it's consistent, allows for consistent capacity for work on the product. The blue bar represents the story work showing how much work is being done on the product. The gray area represents variable overhead. Obviously the gray area directly affects the height of the blue bar representing the work done on stories. So the variable overhead decreases your capacity for work for one sprint, whereas the fixed overhead in orange allows for consistent team performance. So now the important question is how do we handle fixed overhead and variable overhead? Do we ignore them? Adjust capacity? Do we add stories and tasks? Now you may want to pause here a minute to think about this. I've seen a lot of confusion on this one point. The fixed overhead items, such as backlog grooming, sprint planning, demos, and retrospectives, have a consistent effect on your capacity, as I've already pointed out. And therefore, they have no effect on your velocity. So I recommend you ignore these items with respect to velocity. For capacity, I recommend you initially adjust your capacity hours for these items and then forget about it. The same adjustment will work across all sprints. If you've already set capacity at say six hours of work per day per programmer, then you might very well just ignore the effects that fixed overhead have on capacity. So I recommend you do not create stories and do not create tasks for any of the fixed overhead work. Simply a waste of time. It's already accounted for in the capacity. Now what about variable overhead? I think you need to adjust your capacity for unusual events, deducting capacity hours for vacation and so on. The velocity can then be weighted by the relative capacity to show a more consistent view. We'll discuss how to do that in just a minute. So, do you create stories to cover vacation? How about for release planning? Should you release burn down give you credit for completing vacation? For holidays? Or maybe an all hands meeting? I don't think so. Similarly, should you get credit on your sprint burn down for holidays? For going on vacation? Or for attending an all hands meeting? Again, I don't think so. So you shouldn't create tasks or stories for these variable overhead items.
Teams do want to understand how many story points they should attempt for a given sprint. And to do that, we need only account for the variable overhead. So let's assume the standard capacity, which was already discounted for fixed overhead, is 180 hours. Let's also assume that this sprint will lose 12 hours each for three developers, so we have 36 hours in total that's lost. The average velocity has been 58 story points. So how do we uh, calculate our expected velocity? Take this sprint's capacity, that's 180 hours, minus the 36 lost hours, divide it by the standard capacity, and multiply that by the average velocity, and that'll yield 46 story points. So the team should pull in about 46 story points for this sprint. So, understanding capacity, and with using a bit of arithmetic, the team can adjust the velocity to determine how much work to pull into the next sprint. Now going forward to the next sprint, we want the velocity to account for sprints in the past that work, worked with reduced capacity. So let's use the previous scenario. We lost 36 hours capacity in a previous sprint, and that sprint's velocity was 46 story points. Dividing the standard capacity by the sprint's actual capacity, i.e. divide 180 by 144, and then multiplying that by the sprint's actual velocity of 46, we get around 58 story points for a normalized velocity, which is right about where we were in the past. We could then use this result to continue to determine our average velocity. Or we might just look at the standard velocity we had before and use that ignoring the one that was affected by capacity changes. So, how do we help management and the team understand what's going on here? Across, it, how do we give them the big picture? Since we're agile, we want to make the effects visible so that we can make appropriate improvements as needed. We can create a chart that shows a line for capacity and overlay that on a bar chart with story points per sprint. So in that way, we can easily see the effect of changes in capacity on our story points. I have just a few points here to sum this up. I recommend that you don't create stories or tasks to handle fixed or variable overhead. Fixed overhead is not an ongoing part of calculations and can largely be ignored. When you have variable overhead, you should adjust your capacity to properly adjust the velocity. The sprint burndown is not affected by fixed or variable overhead. Sprint planning is only affected by variable overhead, and as we discussed, we can use capacity to make those adjustments. We can also make the effects of variable overhead visible with an appropriately designed chart. Okay, I'm Jim Brisson. Thanks for watching.